not entertained? Yeah, yeah, I think I am. I think I really am. I think we got a solid 8 out of 10 episode for episode 11 of Record of Ragnarok, ladies and gentlemen. Your host, Griever, as always, bringing you guys the review. Now, there's a few things that I missed sort of in the last um, couple of episodes. One thing was the, the themes. As I said before, the OSTs didn't really hit as fire for me as some of the other OSTs in uh, previous fights and previous episodes, but I should have uh, made clear that I did acknowledge the fact that the uh, after going back and watching the episode a couple of times um, and, and the previous ones and stuff to do the reviews and make notes and etc, cetera, etc, cetera, I find that uh, one key thing that I've been missing is Kojiro's theme is very, very suited. See, what, what I did before, I was so focused on the voice acting choice in the English and I was praising the idea of, you know, somebody actually having a, an Eastern accent for the character and all that stuff, which sometimes is quite rare in an English dub. Usually everyone just has an English VA, you know, sort of idea. So it was uh, surprising and really good. And that was sort of my vocal point. That was my focus point. And here uh, I sort of, I guess, skimmed over the fact that the samurai, the old ting ting, like the old... Um, I guess like 40s, 50s, it sort of reminds me of, uh, you know, the, the, the Legendary Seven, the Seven Samurai movie uh, and stuff like that from uh, b back in the black and white days and stuff. And of course, it's been remade multiple, multiple times. Uh, it sort of reminded me of that. I'm getting that old, uh, that old style feeling of old classic samurai films and such. And I just really, really enjoy this sort of the, the way the sound is appropriate. It's not one of my favorite themes. But it suits, which is why I didn't bring it up before, but it certainly suits Kojiro and what, where they're going with his character and all that stuff. Like, I, th I just thought it was very, very well done. It's an appropriate one. It's just not one of my favorites, so I sort of glossed over it before. But it doesn't mean it was bad. It's certainly very, very suiting. And it's used again in this episode and such. And th there was a lot of things I sort of liked about this episode. I like the fact that they left off, uh, like... The, the the choreography and the fight seem to be at a very good pace. I sort of had a feeling that the fight would be I don't know. I, I don't really know what I expected from the from the the last episode. I don't know what I really expected from episode 12, but I sort of figured that this fight would be dragged out longer. Because I assumed we would end off the season with the end of round three. But here they spend their time and it's, it's well paced and I just really enjoy it. I like the idea of him jumping back into that little quick flashback against uh, 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 Miyamoto uh, Musashi there. Uh, I think that's his name. Um, you know, the great, the great samurai himself, the dual wielding samurai and such. And he jumps back into that state after he gets his sword broken because he's fighting Poseidon and such. And there's a couple of name changes and such. Like one thing I noticed um, was his epithet as the one under the true one under the sun or whatever they called it. I think it was called, I didn't reread the manga, but I, th I think that's different. I thought it was something about being like the pinnacle under the sun or was it the pinnacle of... The greatest some I, I I'm not sure what his epithet actually was but this one sort of sounded a little corny it's not too bad and maybe it is so similar that maybe it just sounds better when you read it and when you hear it it's sort of like eh. so I, I'm not a hundred percent on that and uh, I believe they changed one of Poseidon's attack names I thought they changed something like that anyways either either way uh, just very very minor things and I thought the fight in the animation was very well done I like the idea that he's like it's being like swallowed up and Hermes and Ares are talking about it. It's like, okay, you have a shark, then you have a great white shark, then you have a megalodon eating it. And that isn't even like, like the depth of Poseidon's strength and power as a god just knows no bounds. Um, there was a, cool, uh, a few really cool things like when he gets his, I think the episode for me really picks up after... Uh, you know, the crowd is going crazy for Poseidon and stuff, and he basically shuts them all up and, and, and all that. But right around that time when uh, he gets his sword shattered, when Kojiro finally realizes, like, even though he can predict the prediction sort of idea, Poseidon is still moving it with the speed and the power and the strength of the gods, and he's able to still outmaneuver him regardless of his ultimate predictions. So, uh, basically, what I really like about this is the fact that afterwards... 
that there's like this moment of silence and this very light, very small, very subtle OST going on. And he talks about the idea like he's thinking about after his sword shatters, we get the flashback scene. And that's when Kojiro basically asks a question to Poseidon and he's flashing back to his own life. Like, have you ever respected your enemy so much because you just enjoyed the fight? Have you ever, uh, you know, cried? Because this happened. Have you ever sweat? Have you ever worked so hard that you didn't even realize that the sun was rising? You know, th th these sort of things, which is something that every, you know, layman, everyone who just works diligently, like uh, Kojiro Sasaki is in this manga and in this story, he's one of the uh, characters that represents hard work to a 11 out of 10. That shit's dialed up to 11. He is a, an, an incarnation of what it means to work hard, to focus and to dedicate your life to one singular aspiration. And he constantly, like many aspirations on the side, you could argue, but his whole thing is going through life, working hard, accepting your defeats, and also accepting your winnings, and just keep pushing forward, keep moving forward. And that's the best way to do it. And even uh, Musashi actually recognizes that that's what he did. I think it was this episode that's what he did where he uh, he's talking to his son or whatever and he goes look he's not copying us or anything anymore he has utilized he fought me sure he lost me one time but he fought for the last 400 something years he has been fighting me in his mind over and over thousands tens of thousands of times until he figured out how to defeat him just like he did with everybody else so it's he truly is the number one you know he is the pinnacle um, and I, I just thought that, uh, the speech was really good and he turns and he, and he basically mocks Poseidon. He says, uh, in two lines, he sort of, uh, surprises or angers Poseidon. One where he says, uh, the way you behave about being a God is, dep sounds depressing as hell. And Poseidon just like, you know, uh, and, and it's a very interesting insight into Poseidon's psyche. And then the other one is, of course, after talking about all these things that he was talking about, you you've never felt this way clearly like I, I shouldn't even bother bringing it up you clearly have never felt like that and it's like I feel sorry for you the whole that's depressing it's in the same vein of what he's basically trying to say is that Poseidon should be pitied not admired not uh, revered he's he's a hollow creature he's a he's a pitiful he's he's sort of sad in a way you know, it's almost like he can sympathize or uh, to a degree. Uh, and that's what he's doing. S Sasuke is basically going, you don't live, uh, basically you don't enjoy your existence. You're not enjoying life. You're not enjoying anything. You think you've reached this point and you're this monotone walking stone. That's all you are, you know, sort of idea. So I love the insight here. I think it's handled very well by the English VAs. I think it's done very well um, from a... Um, from a writing standpoint, from a pacing, directing standpoint, everything was really on point. And then, of course, the transformation into his dual-wielding Niten Garden Ryu. And the thing is, is that we all know, we all know that dual-wielding instantly makes you more badass. Dual-wielding swords is always cooler. It's always cooler than one sword. It always has been, and it always will be, you know? So it's, it's just a staple. Dual-wielding is the best. And here we're getting the exact that exact representation. Now, what I find really really funny though, like the 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 rest of it is really cool because he's starting off and stuff, and Poseidon's just like getting more and more angry. He fights him. He starts cutting him up. Now Poseidon's bleeding and stuff, and this is where of course uh, Musashi is telling his son and stuff like, look, he is constantly in like using the footwork of this school, the strength of this school, the technique from that school. He's incorporating it all. He's creating. Like, he's not just failing to follow one sword style because it's the best. He's incorporating everything, the best of all of us, and he's made it into himself. He is the great, greatest swordsman of all the sword masters gathered here. And it's, it's, it's really badass, and Poseidon's bleeding like, uh, I think Heimdall calls it bleeding like a, a steak on a plate or something like that. A raw steak on a plate. Uh, which is kind of funny, whatever he said. Uh, he's bleeding like a steak. So I, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, the other really funny part, which took me out of the moment for a moment, I think it's intentional because I didn't reread the manga, but it is so like, this is clearly like a shot for shot from the manga. 
And it's when Musashi just, like, he's this big, towering guy, and he's just weeping, and he's just like, you, yes, you do it, you are the best now, you finally achieved it, Sasaki! And I was just like, whoa, I can't even reach that high, like, what the hell was that? And it, it sort of honestly took me out of the moment for a minute, and I just went, what the hell was that? Like, there must have been a better take for that, that doesn't... And then I realized, I think it was, after watching it again, I think it was intentional, but I still find it funny as fuck. Um, I think it was intentional, like, that's the idea, is that he gets all high-pitched and he gets, like, all fangirly. I think that was the, that's what they were trying to showcase. Probably didn't come off that way properly with a lot of folks, so, I mean, I, maybe I'm spitballing here, maybe I'm totally incorrect, and maybe it just was a bad take. I don't know. Either way, I burst out laughing the first time. And I still laughed the second time. So, um, but yeah, the episode overall, as I said, the OSTs were suited. The entirety, uh, Kojiro's speeches. I think this this episode is better than the previous one and the one before it because I think Kojiro's speeches is what brings up this episode. Like, which once again, you could credit the manga for, but I think it's handled very well with the OSTs and the VAs and everything and the animation in this episode was perfectly acceptable it was fine it was solid nothing too great nothing too bad it was just solid overall and uh, yeah I, ju I just really liked the episode and I now I know that like episode 12 is going to be the, the finishing part of the fight but spoiler alert we are pretty close to the end of the fight here so I'm curious as to what they're going to do for the last part. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what are they actually going to do? What are they going to accomplish here in the last part? Um, because uh, there's there's still quite a bit of a runtime. Still a bit of a runtime. So, hmm. Maybe, may, maybe they'll be... Uh, but there are some transition scenes. There's quite a bit of stuff. And maybe they'll uh, expand upon certain scenes from the fight. And it, and it won't be as bad as I think. But uh, anyways... That's the end of uh, my episode review and stuff, guys. I thought, as I said, this solid uh, 7, 8 out of 10 episode. Really good. Um, haven't heard a whole lot of complaints about round 3 overall by most of the fans. Uh, fans, so to speak. And uh, so I went into this assuming that there was not going to be much to complain about. And truly there isn't. Everything is not perfect 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10. But it's certainly a, still a solid, holding a solid 7 in my mind the last couple episodes. So, all right, uh, let's uh, get on to the last episode. The last episode, I may or may not make a 13th video after I do the last one. It's been a hell of a goddamn week uh, trying to record all these episodes and get them out as fast as possible. This has been my highest production I have ever done in the shortest span of time I've ever done. So, thankfully, One Piece and JJK and all these things are on break because I don't know how I would catch up. But, um, yeah, so uh, I might be making a 13th video, however doing a like overall analysis of what I thought of the season, the series overall as a whole, talking about some key points, et cetera, et cetera. Or I might do that in the final video, in the final, in the episode 12. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do there yet. Um, but either way, if you guys want my right now at the end of episode 11, I still say it's a solid 7. I'm going to give probably the series overall a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, it did miss some key points, you know, but it's still like a, it's, it's a, still a C grade for me, it's not it's not like an A tier or anything like that, but it's certainly not a, an E or an F tier like everybody else is trying to make it out to be. It's it's average. It's an average adaptation. It's a C, and it's got some high points. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with the solid. I'm gonna say seven point five as far as I'm concerned. And uh, but I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts, especially in the last video and stuff. And if I make that thirteenth one, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts as well. What would you give this series overall? Um, assuming that, you know, z zero to 10, right? You know, like f five basically being E, D, C, you know, sort of use the letter grade system that all schools use. You know, if you, if you got below a five out of 10, it wasn't exactly a pass in school either. So keep that in mind when you do your one to 10 or your zero to 10 rating. Um, that's the way I look at it. How you guys do it might be different, but uh, yeah. Either way, like, comment, subscribe as always. Don't forget to drink responsibly as always. And we will see you guys again next time for the final episode of Record of Ragnarok. And I have been entertained. Later, everybody.